Uh, hi, my name is John Bernardo, and this is uh, Bronwyn Alexander. She's going to kindly volunteer. And for this video, this is going to be the OPEX assessment portion of the practical for the final project. Uh, in this video, we're going to demonstrate four simple tests that we use for the OPEX assessment that we can perform on any level client. Uh, they're going to be tracking postural endurance, upper body pushing, upper body pulling, as well as single leg unilateral strength and stability. Uh, the first test that we're going to do is called the Sorensen Hole. Okay, so we're going to have client get into the GHD. We want them to put their feet all the way into the back where the knees are more towards the middle and not in the bottom and not in the top. Okay, if it's more towards the top, then it's going to be too hard. If it's in the bottom, then it's going to be more quad and it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to have Brahman step into this, get this set. He's going to have both feet in. And from here, what we're going to instruct the client to do is to extend their legs all the way out. Okay, keep their hamstrings tight. Cross their arms in front of their chest. Keep their chin tucked. Okay, obviously you don't want to have any type of lower back problem. For here, we're looking for lumbar alignment, okay? And we want them to be able to hold this for a minimum of two minutes, okay? That is the passing score for this test. Uh, why do we do this test? Okay, we have a lot of loaded on the postural end, uh, side right here. This is all for postural endurance, control, and stability, okay? You can go ahead and add that. Uh, any movement that we have that's hip dominant, cleans, deadlifts, box jumps, kettlebell swings, uh, going forward through program design, this is going to give you some really good insight into whether or not they're going to be handling high loads on that, especially higher volume, high rep deadlifts, uh, the dynamic portions and, and plyometric stuff with box jumps as well as cleans. Uh, for this, okay, like I said, at two minutes, it's going to be a passing score. If they're in this position right here and they start to dive down a little bit, go ahead and just do this really quick. Okay. Now when they're here and chest starts to fall forward, you're gonna give them one warning for this, okay? You want them to come back up and instruct them where to go, okay? If they start to continue to do that, then you have to terminate the test. Um, for that, okay, if they start to do that over and over again, okay, it's just something that you have to be mindful of looking at from the side as well as the front. So that is the first exercise that we demonstrated for today, the Sorensen hold, okay? The second movement that we're gonna do is an upper body pulling, it's called the Powell raise. We're gonna have, we don't have an adjustable bench, so we had to kind of, uh, mark this off to about 30 degrees, okay, with a 10 pound dumbbell. And what we're trying to do is test upper body pulling, okay. This is especially a good test of unilateral strength and stability. Uh, this is good for long term scapular development. What you want to do is to have the client get it, let them know that it's not the most natural position to be in, but they're going to be laying at their side with the dumbbell right in front. So go ahead and lay in there. Just going to cross their legs over, okay. Instruct them to have to rest their head right on their arms so they have some kind of stability, they're not falling off the bench. You want to have them to have the dumbbell lined up with their chin, right in this position here, okay? Now, from here, you want them to lift up for at least a minimum of eight reps on each arm, okay? With a strict tempo of three, zero, one, zero. So three seconds down, maintaining that posture and position. Coming back up. Okay, go ahead and do eight reps on one side. Catch me off guard on that. And then you're gonna do eight reps. Good. You can look at this from the back as well. And when they're doing this movement, you don't want to have them do any use any momentum when they're coming out of the bottom. Okay, if you see that, typically stop the test immediately. Good, let's go ahead and switch arms. And just for time purposes, I'm only going to have them perform four reps on this right arm. Um, we have done this test before where we've done eight on both arm, on both sides. That is a passing score with a 10 pound dumbbell for males and females. Uh, if you don't know your one rep max for the close grip bench press, okay, you are gonna end up using a 10 pound dumbbell. But ideally, if you are gonna perform this test with a higher level client, you want them to be able to have at least 10% of their one rep close grip bench press. Good. So that's four reps right there. And that is the power base. Now, why do we do this test? Okay? Um, this is a good test of unilateral strength, okay? especially in the shoulders, and as well as when it gives us insight in the program design, are they gonna be able to handle a lot of double arm pulling in that action? Um, when you see a little bit of imbalance from both side to side, okay, that's one thing that's gonna give you some good insight into program design. Um, important for scapular long-term development and health, as well as for any type of vertical pulling, horizontal pulling, all right? So that is the second test. We're moving on to the third test now. This is the push-up or the front-leaning rest. Uh, this is a test that you do for upper body pushing. Now, Bron can do push-ups, so I'm gonna have her demonstrate push-ups. We're only gonna demonstrate uh, five push-ups for this, just for the sake of time. But why do we do this test? This gives us some really good insight into double arm pushing of action. Okay, upper body pushing, especially for strength and endurance that we're looking for. Um, can they coordinate their midline stability as they go up and down with body control? 
uh, for here. We're gonna have, I'm gonna just demonstrate, I'm gonna see how we do five reps. I'm gonna look at it from the front as well as from the side. Okay, can they keep those elbows tucked in tight without having their shoulders flare out? Their hands are underneath their shoulders. Coming up and down, good. Four, and last round, that is five. If somebody cannot perform the push-up, then you just have them perform the front leaning rest, which is this position right here. And for a passing score, you want them to be able to have at least one minute where they can maintain this position. All right, again, you're looking for midline stability. Are they gonna start sinking their hips? Can they properly keep this position for one minute? Uh, so that is the third test. We're gonna move on to the fourth and final test, and this is the standing lunge. Uh, this is one movement that you're gonna have where you want them to be able to have unilateral strength and stability, okay? Um, if you do a lot of bilateral movements with two-legged squats, obviously you could create a deficit or some kind of imbalance in the hips. Uh, see some, maybe some, there's gonna give you some insight into mobility in the ankles, the knees, the hips. Um, for this, what we're gonna have to do is eight reps on each leg, or excuse me, I'm sorry, yeah, eight reps on each leg. Um, so just their forward lunge, okay? If the client cannot perform the forward lunge, then you could possibly have them go to a box step up, okay, sort of a low box. But for here, we're, I'm just gonna be, as I watch this from the front and the side, I'm looking for front foot stability as they step forward. Are, where are the knees going? Or I'm sorry, where is the knee going? Where are the toes going? Are the toes, is there a little bit of instability in the toes? Are the knees gonna be tracking forward? Are we gonna be able to see if they can properly put enough weight into the midline or the midfoot and into the heel when they step back to do this over and over again for eight reps, okay? Um, this gives, gives us some good insight into knee tracking as well if we are going to get into some bilateral movements. So I'm going to watch this from the front first, and I'm going to have you do eight reps on your right leg first to start. Sorry? Good. In here, like I said, we're looking for front foot stability. This is going to give us a good idea of whether or not somebody is glute dominant or quad dominant as they step into these lunges. Okay, can they properly control their body in space as well? Let's switch to the other leg. Again, why do we do this test? Okay, this is a good test for us to be able to test single leg strength and stability. It'll give us a really good idea if they have any kind of hip or, or knee mobility issues. Um, for all of these four tests, like I mentioned before, you can perform these with a level, any level client. Um, they does give you some very good insight into program design moving forward, and it gives you a really good idea of what kind of prescription you want to do for them going forward. So I hope this video was helpful, and that would wrap up the OPEX assessment practical portion. Thank you.